Hey YouTube, how is it going? Today I've came across this interesting video essay on how film directors use focus pulls to manage the attention of audiences. Uh, link to the video is in the description. But since I've been down this virtual production rabbit hole lately, I wanted to do a quick exercise to see if I can leverage the same tool for storytelling with Unreal Engine. Here are the type of results you can expect at the end of this video. I'm going to do this in Unreal Engine. I'm going to try to do it slowly but concisely so you should be able to follow along with it. So we'll be using Unreal Engine 5.0.1 today. And we'll essentially just create a somewhat blank project. So we'll go into games. We'll go into uh, third person because we want to use some of the assets from there. We'll stick with blueprints here, although we won't be touching it today. I'll leave quality preset maximum. I'll include the starter contents, but I won't include the ray tracing here just to save you guys from compiling the shaders. So we'll name this uh, focus pool study. I will go about and we'll go on to create this project. So it's going to essentially throw us into the first, the third person template. Because we're only really interested to kind of create that focus pool effect, we won't spend a lot of time texturing or doing the details for everything. So um, I'm just going to click update here to do update my project. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up the content drawer. Um, I believe it's in characters, mannequins. We'll look at meshes. So we're probably interested in skeleton meshes. Um, we'll draw one of them out here. And then we'll also take out many and just drag it into our scene here. So if you right click, you can navigate with the WAS keys. So I think I want to have my camera layout roughly here. So uh, E and Q will change the elevation. So I think I'll have many in the foreground and queen in the background. So to move many, I can just click on him and drag him around like this. I'm going to rotate him so that he's sideways um, by pressing the E shortcut. So I think I'll have many facing roughly about there. And for the girl, I'm going to uh, press W to go back into translation. So I'm going to have her just kind of peeking out. Um, as if she's spying on the on our main subject here. So quick and easy scene setup. We'll create level sequence here. Yep. I'm just gonna name this focus study level sequence. So I'm gonna click save. So the first thing we're going to do is to add a camera. Um, I believe this is this button here, create a new camera and set it as the camera, camera cut. We can pilot the camera. This button here checks that if we can lock the camera into our viewport so that we can pilot the camera or we can kind of go back to the normal perspective view. So I'm going to quickly pilot the camera here to get a good to get roughly the framing that we want uh, something like this um, what I'm also going to do here to perhaps make things a little bit easier is to uh, split the viewport so I'm going to go into uh, the top menu button here go into layouts and I'm going to go into two panel view 
what I prefer is to have perspective on the left and then to have the right locked to the camera like this so here we want to be able to kind of change our focus so the focus will be primarily on the main subject and then to the subject in the background and then back to the main subject to change the focus so of course we can do it this way so if we change this parameter here you can see how that changes the focus of the camera what we want to do is to keyframe here so that we can control exactly when the focus happens you can also change this in the details panel here for the cine camera i believe here we're looking at current camera settings and under focus settings here um, we'll be able to change the manual focus distance as well so to get started at frame zero we want to be focused on many so on the left viewport and do so i'm going to use the eyedropper tool here so i'm going to click this eyedropper tool and then click many as our first point of focus see that changed the focus distance i'm going to create a keyframe here in the current focal distance by clicking adding a new keyframe and I'm going to let that row fall at 30 frames per second. We'll let that row fall for a second or so. And then we'll create another keyframe, which bounces it to the start of the transition. So we want the transition to last, to last roughly about, let's say, about a second. So at the end of this transition, we would want to be focused on to the subject in the background. So I'm going to click my eyedropper again and click on the background subject. You see how that's changed the focus here. I'm just going to create a keyframe here as well. So we'll focus on the, we'll keep the audience attention on the background subject for about roughly about here and here we want to start the transition to focus back onto the, the foreground subject so I'm going to keyframe this and then we're going to kind of do the eyedropper again focus on the primary subject uh, keyframe that and uh, let that play. So instead of fine tuning this, let's just say, uh, let's just see how this plays out right now. We can maximize the, the main camera viewport by using the top right corner here. And we'll just see how this plays. The focus change is actually very subtle. So we can see kind of like the blurry then comes in clarity and then becomes blurry again. For our purpose, we probably want this to be more exaggerated. So we can do this by decreasing the current aperture parameter here. So I'm going to change this to 1.5 and let's see how this plays out. That roughly has the effect we want. I'm going to just change that to one to make the effect a little bit more pronounced. Yep. So this looks roughly like what we want is, but one thing that is particularly noticeable especially if you compare it to the reference 
we have here. Is that the focus seems to be a little bit too fast and a little bit too unnatural. So what we'll do is that we'll edit the timing for some of these keyframes and also edit the curve for these. So what we'll do here is that we'll kind of make sure manual focus distance is selected. Um, we'll look at the animation key. So I think I'll make this animation key just a little bit longer to begin with. And what tend to happen very naturally is that usually you don't just start changing the focus straight away. There's a slow gradual increase and then a slow gradual decrease. Um, we can do this by toggling the weights of the tangents. So by clicking this, um, we can toggle the weighted tangent and then extract this out to make it a little bit more graduate. So we'll do this here and we'll cancel that one. And for this particular point, I'm going to do this here. Uh, so I'm going to drag these out a little bit to make them a little bit smoother. and the same one here as well. Uh, I'm not going to kind of focus on the perfection of these. Too much. That looks good to me. So let's play that and see how that looks. So it's a little bit more graduate. It's a little, it's a little bit more the effect that we're, that we're looking for. So the last thing I want to show you guys is to just render this out. So I'm going to click render. I'm going to leave it as a video, but I am going to render at the highest quality setting, uh, leaving the compression quality, uh, the, comp the compression ratio by default. And I'm just going to click capture movie here. I make sure I save everything. So the engine is not going to go ahead and render the shots that we're looking for. So that's done. I'm just going to open the capture folder and take a look at the video we captured. So that's roughly the cinematic effect that we're looking for. And of course we can spend a little bit more time uh, tidying up and adding more details. But let's keep it as a very quick and easy study just to kind of explore this type of, um, this type of techniques. I hope this video was useful to you guys and you were able to follow along with this. I'm looking to do a lot more of these in the future. So if you do have any thoughts, suggestions, feedback, um, I would love to hear them. All right, peace out.